Next question is from Lean Queen. What's your best advice for someone who wants to become a better communicator? What would you say is a top trait of a great communicator? Yeah, a great follow-up oh, question. Yeah. I one of my my first mentors in fitness, uh, my friend Don. Um, he was a, excellent uh, at selling and communicating fitness and the benefits of health. And I remember, I, 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 you know, when he would talk to potential members or or tr- you know clients, you know, he was just very effective. Now I was a young kid, right? When I started working with him, I was 18 years old, full of piss and vinegar. I love to talk back then, just like I love to talk now. And I remember talking to somebody about fitness and he sat in and I did, you know, what I did well as I presented and I talked and I motivated, inspired and used my charisma and all this other stuff. And I remember that the, the, at that point I was trying to show off in front of him, right? Cause he's watching me. So I'm like, I want to do a really good job. And the person, you know, they kind of liked what I had to say, but they were struggling with it. And I remember they left and they ended up not, you know, getting started in fitness or whatever. And I was really disappointed and, you know, the guy, the person left and then Don sat me down and he goes, I was just like you when I first got into fitness. He goes, I'm going to teach you one of the most important lessons in communication. He said, use your ears and your mouth in proportion. I'm like, huh? He goes, listen twice as much as you talk. He said, I think a lot of people think communication is talking. More of it has to do with listening. So I would say the top trait of a great communicator is listening. Number one, it gives the person, the, they, they, they know that you're hearing them, so that already opens them up to anything you're going to have to say. And number two, you don't know what to communicate unless you listen. Yeah. You know, you, you really don't. You have no idea. You know, I, I've seen trainers make this mistake where I remember I had this lady that one time, you know, was thinking about working out. She was in her 50s and the trainer kept talking to her about how she's going to get her body in bikini shape and she's going to look fit and she's going to look so hot. And she completely failed to hear the woman say that her problem was that she had osteopenia. She mm. didn't give a shit about that. Mm. So her communication was terrible. Yeah. Well, communicate sales is just communication. We've talked about this before, right? So people get so turned off by uh, talking about sales or closing, but really that's all that is, is effective communication. So I'll give you a couple of books or three books that come to mind that I think are not traditional in the sales world that I haven't been recommended before, but I really enjoyed reading. Uh, Verbal Judo, uh, Sway, and Biology. All three really good books in, in effective communication and sales. And the other thing I used to always tell my trainers is, you know, what I used to ask them, I said, what is the difference between a good closer and a great closer? And a, a good closer learns to overcome objections and can push people and they know their product really well and they can push people into a sale. A great closer can pull somebody into a cell by asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of goes in in line with what you're saying, Sal, is just learning to listen more than you talk. So learning to really hear the client or the person across from you and then learn to ask the questions to lead them in the direction that you want to go. That strategy is far more powerful than trying to push or convince somebody to do something. Yeah, Yeah, I think, too, one thing that uh, I struggled with and I know – you know, some other trainers probably out there when they're going through the process of trying to get to the close, right? Like you're anticipating the close, you're presenting, uh, you know, what that looks like for for the client. But uh, now there's this uncomfortable silence uh, where they're trying to think it over. And <laughs> it, it's like you get this tendency of like, okay, it's silence, so that's bad. So now I have to jump in and say, well, you could also do this. And, and you just literally like cut your feet out from under you. Like they, they had, you need to give them ample time to, to think about it and just wait, just mm-hmm. wait, don't say anything, let them uh, present uh, their ideas to you. And so I, that's just something that I had to work on personally. I know that I got better at as I, as I got more confident in, uh, y- you know, my skills in terms of like trying to convey, uh, you know, the best plan for them. But it, it, it's just like, it's, it, it's a process of reps, just like anything else. If you're in the gym, you're like you need, you need the reps, you need the people in front of you. You need to be able to see what went wrong, you know, how I can improve. And like, for me, and specifically like that was everything I had to just mm. keep placing appointments and, and keep booking them and keep talking to people randomly in the gym because I hated it you know and it's just like you just have to do it yeah one of the big I'd say most common uh, mistakes that uh, and we'll stick with trainers that trainers make when it comes to communication is that they talk without realizing it they talk people out of yeah. getting started in fitness and you probably you probably hear what I'm saying and you're thinking 
How is that possible? Why, why would a trainer talk someone out of fitness? Well, they don't mean to, but that's exactly uh, what they end up doing. I'll give you a very simple example. You know, If somebody is talking to you and you want to talk to them about fitness and you're trying to get them started and they say, you know, I don't have a lot of time. I just don't have a lot of time to work out. I've got kids. I've got a job. And the reason why I haven't done this is I just I don't have a lot of time to get started. Well, the, the, the trainer that's not really paying attention um, is going to start the whole motivation talk. Well, you know, everybody's got 24 hours in a day, and yeah. it, we have to prioritize our time. And by the way, if you prioritize fitness, you're going to be healthier, which is going to give you more energy. Then you're going to feel you're going to be more productive. You're going to have more time for your kids. You're going to be a better parent. All true. None of that is false. It's all totally true. But what you failed to do was listen to the person, empathize, and work with them. And it, believe it or not, less words would have been a million times more effective because what you just did by that is you literally talked them out of it. You literally just proved to them that you don't understand them, you don't know what they're talking about, and that it's, yeah, you're going to have to make a lot of crazy changes right off the gates to do this fitness thing. When all you had to say, this is all you had to say was, oh, you know what? Uh, it makes a lot of sense. How much time do you think you can devote to fitness realistically? Whatever answer they give you is the right answer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. One day a week, no problem. It's better than no days a week. I'm going to construct the best routine I possibly can with that one day a week. We can totally start there, and it's much better than doing nothing at all, And which is also all completely true. So this is one – and by the way, communication skills are the most important skills you can learn in life ever. I don't care what job you do. Look at the relationships that you're in. Um, you always have to ask yourself what your goal is. Like what is the goal – with this communication that I'm doing with this person? Is it to prove them wrong and prove myself right? Um, or is it to get them to understand what I'm saying and maybe sway them a little bit, maybe persuade them to do what I know to be the right thing? When you think of it that way, you tend to communicate more effectively. You tend to not be so zealot, you know, ze such a zealot about what you're saying. Um, it's a little softer because here's the deal. Okay. Here's the reality. If I tell the person who just told me they have no time and I say to them, well, how much time do you realistically have? And they say one day a week, here's what I know about fitness. I know this for a fact. They come in because now I've listened to them and they've, they honestly believe they only have one day a week. No problem. Nine out of 10 times, the person shows up one day a week. They do it a long enough time. They feel, see the benefits. Guess what they do? They make more time yeah. all on their own, just like magic. I used to love watching this. It would take two months, three months, sometimes a year. Inevitably, the client would come up to me and be like, you know what, Sal? I'd like to work out one more day a week. What do you think I should do? Just like magic. And these are the, they would end up sticking with fitness. So uh, communication has a lot to do with learning and a lot to do with understanding what your desired result, in, result is. It has very little to do with winning uh, an argument or a conversation.